Então, vamos iniciar. Eu queria desejar um bom dia a todos. E dando continuidade às ações da Odeskills América, estamos realizando mais um webinar que tem como enfoque cumprir um dos objetivos da Odeskills América, que é compartilhar conhecimento e experiência na área da educação profissional. Aqui um agradecimento especial à senhora Euci e à senhora Maura, que são do Comitê Education de Committee of World Skills America, e and have the work to schedule and organize the webinars, among other activities. I'd like to greet the members of the World Skills Americas board, the official delegates and technical delegates of member countries, officials, and everyone that's connected with us today. Aiming at facilitating and making our communication feasible today, we have two professionals with us who will assist us in the simultaneous translation from Portuguese to English, Rebecca, and from Portuguese to Spanish, who is Carmen today. On this screen, you can see the explanation of how this will work. Please ask your questions in the chat box, and at the end, we'll ask our speakers and our guests today the get the questions Carlo Ferreira and Felipe please go back to the previous screen we'll also explain to you how to access the simultaneous interpretation please click on the icon and click your language of to choice English or Spanish or Portuguese Today's webinar is addressing a very strategic theme for all of humanity. But at this time, when we have a project, and my experience says that many countries invest in vocational education and professional education. So there's that first moment where people are excited about the project, however, the continuity and consolidation of the process sometimes is left a little behind. So the theme, which is if the evaluation of excellence of professional educational projects, we have two guests here today with us, two former students and professionals that experienced this process throughout all of its levels. And now they'll introduce themselves. I won't go into the details so I don't get anything wrong. So I'd like to say that in today's topic in the excellence of a professional educational project, this will last about an hour and a half. I know it's long, but it's very interesting content. So we'll have as well the testimonial of two young people who went through the process and transformed their lives. So now I'd like to hand over to Claudio Ferreira and Felipe Caloca, and I would like to thank them in advance for sharing this experience with us. Claudio and Felipe, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Professor Spada. Well, you started off calling us young, so I'm very excited now. Thank you for saying that I'm young. Good morning, everyone, again. Thank you to the Board of World Skills, all the delegates, everyone participating. Thank you, Professor Spada, for the invitation to speak here. It's an honor to be here with you. My name is Claudio. And I hope that we have a great hour to exchange the experiences of a professional educational project, but above all, life experience. Philippe? Good morning, everyone. I would like to thank, first and foremost, Professor Spada, Senai, 
all the members of World Skills America and all the participants for giving me the possibility of taking part in this event. I have never dreamed of having the opportunity of being able to be a part of this with you and showing you the life experience that I had with my transformation through the excellence of this educational project and everything that we've been through. Let's begin. Okay, Paul, can you please put our slides up? As Professor Spada mentioned, we're here today to talk about the evaluation of the excellence of professional education project. So the entire project with this content has to have two focuses. So the of origin, focusing on the technical and technological competencies where you're aiming to train and qualify these professionals, building these technical and technological competencies. But we can't forget that the world today requires much more than that, it requires that professionals are ready and prepared and therefore they require soft skills. And for this project to be complete, it does have to address these two aspects that we will address today. Next. We're going to talk about our dear school. When we joined, it was called the Sinai School Swiss Brazilian. And then the name was changed to Sinai School Swiss Brazilian Paulo Ernesto Tolle to pay tribute to the regional director of Sinai, Mr. Paulo Ernesto, who was the director back then when the project was conceived. So very fair to pay this tribute to him. The story begins in the 70s. It's a very long story. It started off in the beginning of the 70s in the past century. And it started off by signing the agreement, which was a very traditional school here in Brazil, with between Sinai and Swiss Contact, a Swiss company that trains professional professionals. And so in addition to the technical training, there was also a focus on organization and quality policies in a time where that wasn't, there wasn't much said about that, especially here in Brazil. After this consortium was signed in 71, in 73, the course the technical course in precision mechanics was implemented. And in 73, we had the first class. Philippe and myself, we joined the school in 75, so we're part of the third class. It lo I look younger, I know that. I think you can see that. But the thing is that I joined when I was very young. We joined in 75. We were the third class. So I've known Felipe since then, 46 years of a friendship. And in the, fo the following year, we had the honor of studying under Professor Spada. That was back in 76. Well, maybe 76 or 77. So I believe that we were his students in 76. Going back to the topic, we had Swiss Swedes that were part of the team to implement the school. First three came in to Brazil, Professor Klaus, Max, and Brusson, and then we had Professor Bienen, Volaton, and Zigo. They remained in Brazil during the beginning of the school. So we were lucky to have classes with these professionals. And from then on, 
Oh, this is the building of our school. There weren't many transformations to the school since the beginning. Obviously, on the inside, we did modernize the school, but the facilities are basically the same since the school was built. And in the school history, we start to introduce the stories of our lives. Philippe? I come from an area here of our population, one of the more needy regions. So way back in the beginning when I was still a kid, I had this type of lifestyle. We, need, we had many needs and I didn't have any ambitions. My biggest wish was to stay in my community and be be a part of groups that weren't the best type of people to hang around with for society. So it was very easy for me to go into the world of drugs or crime. There were many facilitating regions because of the circumstance or and the region and the friends that I had back then. Those were the kind of people that would go, let me go into that type of activity. At a given point, I met, met this professor, Professor Manuel. He's in the picture. He was a phys, phys ed teacher in one of the schools in the outskirts. So as a young, I was young, I really liked soccer and I was pretty skilled above average compared to other kids. So Professor Manuel, or he invited me to join Senai Swiss Brazilian school. Back then, I didn't know what Senai was. I had never heard of it before. And I didn't know any of any schools that could add anything to me. To me, the school was the streets. So my idea was about hanging out, hanging around in the streets. And Professor Emanuel gave me that possibility. He enrolled me in the school. He gave me money so I could take the first test to enter the school. When I visited the school for the first time, it was a huge impact. I couldn't believe that I would be able to be a part of that, to be a part of a school like that, and be a part of that and grow with those people in that beautiful, clean, environment that could offer me a lot. So with that possibility, being a kid that was out on the streets, this teacher found me and brought me in. And he brought me in through soccer. So the soccer would allow me to grow and maybe be a part of society. But he was actually bringing me in to get me ready for life and be a part of society. Claudia, my story is no different. I was also born in a very low income town in Sao Paulo. Uh, in It's with a community house and people live together and people sublet the rooms. So I was born in the neighborhood of Bixiga in Sao Paulo in a place like this one. And as Felipe mentioned, there weren't many possibilities for success in the future. Here in the middle, you can see the building of the school that I went to from elementary school until 
I concluded middle school. And when I did conclude that, my perspectives were, back then we called it, it was called high school. So I would go to school at night and work during the daytime. Not too many perspectives. So then I found a Sinai brochure talking all about about all the Sinai vocational schools. And I got excited about one of the pictures on the brochure. Unfortunately, I don't have it anymore. And I tried looking for one, but I couldn't find it. So it's a picture showing a student with uh, a white lab coat and working with uh, technical equipment. And I was excited about that picture. And I said, well, I want to see what this school is all about. So I had that vision when I got to the school. So I saw this beautiful facade with a beautiful school, clean school with a beautiful garden. And as I went inside, Felipe didn't know what Sinai was all about. And then I didn't know what it was about to be a technician in mechanics. So I just walked in and then I bumped into one of the students of the first class, Menezes, and he said some good words about the school. And I said, wow, this is an opportunity. So instead of going to school at night and working in the daytime, the only good job I would be able to get would be the male career at a company. So when I entered the school, I had access to a scholarship. Well, not when I joined, it was, there was a selection process. It was very tough back then. So as Philippe, I was selected and the actual possibility of going to school was the scholarship. Back then there was a scholarship offered by Sinai, by the Roberto Simonson Institute, and you'd receive a scholarship. One year after the scholarship, you return that. So it was a sustainable program that we had back then, and I was granted. So I was enchanted by this school, and I decided to join. And I didn't even know what I would be doing there, but it was such a bu beautiful building, much more beautiful than the building that I know. Philippe, so this is the entrance to the workshops and the labs that we have in the Sinai Swiss Brazilian School. Here you can see what it was like. And this is the same entrance, same lobby that we have 40 years ago. You can see how clean it is and how well cared for it is. aiming at excellence and professionalism from the first moment that you step inside the school. So these concepts come from the professionals from Switzerland and the school staff where they prepare you from the start, cleanliness, organization of everything that involves professionalism in any different area, especially in precision mechanics. So from the start, we were being prepared to learn more about what was coming. So you had to have the discipline of organization and cleaning, and that could be used in any industry, in any segment, in any business model that would enable us to be a part of that. So that's the plan and the mock-up of the workshops in the lobby, where you can see all the different areas, all the different classes from the first year. So in the first year, 
it's a more simple contact with manual training and first contacts with projects, designs, manual execution, learning about the devices that could be used in the equipment. And then in the second year, where you would strongly work in projects, enabling you to have more knowledge about how you would handle that model. And then we went on to the third and fourth year. I'd like to highlight that this course had eight hours of technological competencies on a daily basis. That enabled us to have better knowledge and being able to use the technology that we learned and uh, everything that we learned in practice. And after that, we learned about the equipment. So the training was used to accustom us to be clean and organized. We also had the high school teaching. So we had the technical training and the supplementary school subjects during those three years. As you can see here, how organized and clean it is. The devices prepared, the tooling, and all the other equipment that's used in these machines, these Swiss machines, first line machines for precision mechanics and milling. The concern with equipment cleaning was conveyed to us so that we can maintain that type of work in our professional life after we were trained. So you can see that there was a lot of knowledge and control in relation to cleaning. So covering the machine after use and keeping it as if it were new. So that was very important to have this excellent upkeep of all the machines that we used. You can see these Swiss machines that prepared us for that. Here you can have a better understanding about how the equipment was used. The concern that the teachers had was to convey to us the practice. So we had the drawing boards, as Claudio mentioned, we'd work on them. And then we went to the hands-on experience. So making devices and fixation elements and using them as best as possible, that was one of the school direction's concern, always aiming at pursuing excellence in quality. Here you can see the school's commitment to keep this advanced technological knowledge up to date. So they're always aiming at making sure that we had the most advanced equipment available. Nowadays, the Sinai Swiss Brazilian School and all the other schools maintain the improvement of the equipment and the labs. Here's a picture of the lab, the metrology of instrumentation, to measure the equipment and calibrate the equipment to guess, get the best precision out of, out of them so that we can work with excellence in the project, products that were manufactured based on 
the projects. Here you can see the CNC machines, you can see numerical command screens to prepare the students and show how they should work on this. So we first we were prepared in the classroom to develop this study and to get the most up-to-date knowledge on that and then we had hands-on practice in the workshop. This is the lab, always aiming at showing the efficiency of our products. This picture shows the concern that the school board had to prepare students for the end of the course. So here on this bench you can see books with the projects executed in teams with two or three students per team, sometimes five, depending on the project. Enabling them to work on the project, design the project, study the project, and then execute until the end, reaching that final product. And then the product is approved by the team of instructors, staff, everyone participates in that to have well-qualified technicians. So the visual communication was always very important in the company. Here, you can see that in the main entrance of the school is always trying to show the care that the school has with the activities relating to the course. Same case here, showing the projects, always trying to show that the human part of school, the sports part of school is also present. So we took part in championships and tournaments. So youth would integrate with this school and other schools. So that visual communication at the school is very important for that. Now about development that the school always aiming at updating technology models and the main needs that we have. Here we have a classic example of a product that's a mechanical knee. The mechanical knee was produced for an association that we have here in Brazil. It's the association that cares for low-income youth and children with physical disabilities. And that process was done at the school. And at that time, the idea was to nationalize that product and be able to get produce this product at a lower price and having better efficiency, better turnaround time, because that's very important for patients that require this product. This is state-of-the-art technology equipment that we have. There are five axle ma machines, machines that enable technicians to take better advantage in excellence and quality in the global market. This is 
height measurement next to the equipment that it will be used. And here we have the integration between machine production process and agility to measure the product to achieve quality and efficiency in that product and in the machine. Here once again, numerical programming in a machine of excellence. Your height measurement in the lab. This is a 3D machine that measures all the products pursuing excellence in quality. Here, the height measurement. We have a Dielson in, or actually Ejimilson in, from Senai. Ajimilson is his name. Sorry, I always get his name mixed up. Ajimilson is an example of what the school was always looking for in having the best quality and knowledge and the best professionals in the market. He was a student of the first class of the Sinai Swiss Brazilian School. And he had the opportunity to study there, is very competent, and currently he's one of the instructors at the school, and he dedicates himself and has been giving back something that he has received throughout all this time. This picture is great. It shows us that the professionalism plus the human side helps us to stand out so that we can pursue quality improvement and have a great company. Here, we want to show that the company is always updating itself. This is a network course that we have. So we have the lab where we carry the students execute projects with the assistance of the instruct instructors. And here in practice, they can learn more about high technology products that are required to learn more and according to market needs. Claudio, thank you, Philippe. Well, Felipe was traveling in time, right? We were talking about the beginning and then we are showing the technological update that the school has today. Let's go back in time and let's show that the school is not just about training the technological and technical competencies. The school also has a strong view on the holistic side. So here we go back in time and the school also had some concerns uh, in fostering things such as editing a newspaper, having a musical festival or drama classes and plays. There was also the human side, training people in that, not just in the, on the technical side. Like Felipe mentioned, where we had a course, a four-year course, eight hours a day. So in addition to the technical training, we also had academic training, highly focused on the human side. And also in sports, in leisure. So we spent the entire day at school. We had time for sports activities. And many times we'd stay after school because it was such a pleasant environment that we would stay there and do sports or play ping pong or board games. It was a great place and it, it felt very good to belong. And thanks to great instructors that we had at the school, and we remember many, in addition to Professor Spada that was here with us, we remember a lot of the instructors that we had back then, our Portuguese teacher, Professor Selma, math teacher, Teresa, physics, Yushua, phys ed, like Felipe mentioned, Manuel, history, Maria Antonieta. 
So all of our teachers, especially our Portuguese and history teacher, encouraged us to do other activities. Thanks to Professor Selma, I learned how to read. Well, I mean, I actually learned how to read because I started I acquired the habit of reading books. These are great Brazilian authors that we learned that in the course. So we were able to add on to this entire training. And that, for us who were coming from vulnerable situations in very low income regions enabled us to have that feeling of belonging, belonging to a community, our school for precision mechanics and technology. We belong to that and belong to a country. So we would raise the flag every week. And the thing about belonging was given to us by the school and that made a huge difference to us and everyone who has been there, who studied there. To talk about that, we will hear the testimonial of two colleagues of ours, alumni. Please play that in the video. Hello, my name is Rodo Vol. I studied precision mecha mechanics, and I'm from the class of 83 of Senai, Swiss, Brazil. Since I studied, I've been working with metrology, and I'm currently, I th I'm the director of Visomaz Metrology. So for over 20 years, it has been accredited by CGEC, and in Metro, we produce reference materials and we're accredited to calibrate in th eight different magnitudes. And we're also accredited for testing in mechanics and technical. My training at the school was essential to be able to achieve that objective in my life. And I'd like to remind you that all that foundation that the school gave me gave me the diversity to work in different areas. I'm proud to say that I studied and graduated in precision mechanics at Sinai, Swiss, Brazil. This is a testimonial of another colleague. My name is Carlos Klein. I'm from the 96th class of the Precision Mechanics from the Sinai Swiss Brazilian School. And I participated in the international tournament in Switzerland where I received the trophy of the Brazilian with the highest score. After I came back from the tournament, I joined a company with packaging as a as machine designer after that I became a designer one year later and then three years later project manager in 2008 the company went bankrupt making that available in the market so myself and two or three more empl employees from the company decided to open a company to supply the market it's Ibris Pack. We make packaging machines, industrial automation, and special projects, especially for the chocolates and crackers industry. Sinai was the foundation for my entire professional career. I am very thankful for that. So here we saw the testimonial of two colleagues in different moments in the school. And we highlighted these two co colleagues that are out in the world and they were entrepreneurs. Today they're business people and their technical background came from the school. And not just that, their values as well. Another important thing that has to be mentioned is about ethics in work, the things that we learned in school. It's about doing things well done the first time and take on the responsibility and discipline, the things that you actually have to deliver. Today we talk so much about delivering, right? And that even came from the Eng 
English, right? Everybody talks about delivery, right? You have to deliver. Uh, when you work, you need to deliver. But we did deliver back then, even though we didn't use that word in English. And we were very concerned about ethics in the workplace. And that led to many careers of success. Those are two examples. And we have one more. Next, please. This is a company from one of our colleagues who works with centralized lubrication systems. He works with first line equipment from Germany and European countries. And but he conceives the design here in Brazil. And it's one of our colleagues, one of the students from our school, former or one of the alumni. And we'll talk more about that knowledge and the interpersonal relationships that we build with the students, other students. This is another video. It's a very important moment given the situation that we're experiencing right now of the pandemic. From the start, Senai, particularly our school, was sought out to develop parts for respirators because there was a company that had a production volume of approximately 200 respirators and they had to increase that to a thousand per month and didn't have the competence to do that. So the school was thought out because there's this pro there was a production bottleneck. And as you can see, the entire process, automated process, was developed. We did the production process automation. And we also produced the body of the valves, which is the central, the core of the respirator. And that enabled them to have higher capacity. That shows not only Sinai's the school's concern uh, interacting with the industry, but also with the community through that responsibility that is not just corporate, but also about citizenship. So lastly, we go back to one of our first slides where we can be absolutely sure 
that in the school we built the technical and technological competencies and in addition we also build the soft skills as they're very much required by the market nowadays so without a doubt that's something that we brought in by the school and the school continues that's our class when we were graduating you can see that we're celebrating the end of the course that was back in 1978 I'd like to, to show you that interesting person with the interesting hair there. That's Philippe, who's here with us. Luckily, I wasn't there. I'm not in that picture, but Philippe is. You could see that there's he's not too different than he was back then, right? That's our graduation. The school prepared us and then we go out into the world. That's the reality, facing the world outside. So facing the world outside, and as you saw in some of the testimonials, different careers came up, different professionals that worked, and even in other areas, not just in the industry. So we have colleagues all over the world in different positions, in different companies using the technical competencies, but also using management skills. So that's something that really shows the efficacy of this project, this professional training project. And then we go back to the focus. I'm going to talk about what happened to me when I graduated. So You've been seeing our story here in Brazil in the past de decades, almost five decades that I've been in the, the labor market. Brazil went through many changes. But when we graduated, it was a moment of three, or many different changes. I received three job offers to work, go to work for Sandvik and ABB, Asia Brown Bovary. I know that it's, were well, actually Brown Bovary wasn't ABB back then. And a Brazilian and company called Funbeck. And I went to Funbeck. I was enchanted by them. And they produced th optical products. And I enjoyed that at school. So that's why I went there. I was an 18 year old. So I went to work for a company that made lenses and microscopes that was fantastic and they also made cardiology monitors here in brazil and you can see that monitor there that was the first cardiology ultrasound developed in brazil and i had the honor of being a part of the team that designed that equipment just one detail there the everyone on the team were a little Electronics. We didn't have any mechanical engineers, so I was responsible for the mechanical design. And we had uh, a register that, or a recorder that recorded the images of the ultrasound. And back then, we had to reveal that. So we had a dark room where the physician could activate in a synchronous drive that would record the images of the test. That was the beginning of my career. Then I continued in mechanics. I worked in a powder metallurgy. I was the manager of tooling and instrumentation working with that. And the very high levels in the Indian industry, you probably know how this industry is. It's a Brazilian company where I became the maintenance manager and tooling manager. Among other experiences, I worked in many companies. Then I also worked at Caio uh, bus manufacturer and was the engineering manager there. After I graduated from school, many things changed and inspired by some of my instructors, I studied uh, mechanical technology at a government institution in UNESP 
And that enabled me to be the engineering manager at Cayo. And then I worked at Alcoa, an um, U.S. multinational in the plastics division. Back then they had that. So I was the superintendent of engineering of that division. And then life moves on. I joined another company that makes products for construction. I was the sales director, manager in one of the plants. Then I became sales manager, then the director of business unit, director of a business unit that manufactures paints for real estate. So that background that the school gave me let me go from fine mechanics to bus and truck chassis to plastics to construction materials ending well not ending but in the last position of business manager of a paint plant so that background was there. The seed was planted. And then I started teaching. I'm, a prof I'm an instructor at FGV, the Getulio Vargas Foundation, one of the best business schools in Brazil. And I currently own a consulting firm. And these are some of my clients on the bottom where I work with strategy and sales strategy for these clients. All of this is a result of that seed that I planted way back. Philippe? I'm also going to show you some of my track record after I graduated as a technician in precision mechanics. I'm very proud to say that, that I'm a technician in precision mechanics at Senai Swiss Brazilian School. So you have open doors every time that there is a market to develop or to looking for skills we that make things easier for us. I started off at Scania as an intern. Scania is a truck company, very well known internationally. From there, I went as an intern, I went to Sul Mecanica, a uh, company of machines and drills. So that was my first official job, so to speak, at, after being a technician. I started off with as a technical assistant and then became the director of that company. When I worked it there as a director, I could understand much more what the school gave me, how much it enabled me to grow, and also giving me the opportunity to work in such companies. And then I set up my own company. I had two companies, one tech mechanic and the other McAlfee. These two companies aimed at working in precision mechanics, one in the automotive area, servicing the big players, and McAlfee was the other company that was servicing the motorcycle parts segment. So not, so not only fine milling mechanics and also precision mechanics, micro milling, we achieved two we achieved 2.5 million parts a month in our facilities so I was very successful for 24 years in those companies I decided to leave both of them sold it to my business partners and looked for new paths so that I could use my knowledge and understand and take advantage of the business management that I believe that I can help. So that I did extensive work in some companies. The two companies, Esquadri Sul and Pro-X Aluminum Extrusion are where I currently work. I work as a director in both companies. So that's what I've been doing now, and I was able to do that because of my precision mechanics course.
I'd like to talk about our newest development. And it's something that was done with the technical knowledge and clarity of what we received in terms of companionship, humanity, and enjoying all the moments that we had together. This is the association of the former students. The practice of some students getting together to having meetings to celebrate, so five-year class reunion, 10-year class reunion, and maintaining permanent contact of the group continued. So it was important for us to do something. So in these conversation of the alumni, we decided that we had to give back some of what we received of what was given to us all the knowledge that we received and out of the and the need to give back to society what we received from Sinai this alumni association was created to improve and give society better conditions and because of the work that we carry out we believe that we have a lot to offer Claudia would you like to talk about this The association was born five years ago. We've been talking about this for a while, but five years ago, Philippe had this idea. Let's make this a reality. So this was Philippe's idea with a lot of support from Professor Spada, especially on the emotional side, the personal side. And Spada said, yes, you can do it. It will work, and Philippe believed in that, invited some other colleagues, and we started to build the Alumni Association. When we started the association, we did, we benchmarked, we looked at other associations, uh, alumni associations, not only in Brazil, but also outside Brazil, so that we can create it correctly. We had the support of legal to create the bylaws. And this is the image of our inaugural assembly that was the at the end of 2016 at the school. You can see that we had many f alumni attending. The school director, Professor Eroino. So that's how we created our association. And it was born in a structured manner, as I mentioned. We have our mission, our vision, our values, aiming at promoting the development of our community and also contributing. The key word is give back. And you can see that in our vision. So it's giving back to society what we received and achieved thanks to Sinai with very strong values based on people, ethics, and transparency and responsibility and accountability. So the association was born with the bylaws. And every two years, we change the board. We're already on the third. Philippe is the chair which has many former students on it. Just to give you an example, we have Otavio Mizikami, who is the vice president of Honda, Fernando Martins, a business person, owner of Continental Screws, Marcelo Rezendi, currently the 
Brazil CEO operations of Borg that recently acquired Delphi. Marcos Ribeiro, the statutory director of Jaco, a big Brazilian company. Genesi, alumni from the first class, he owns a company, a packaging company. So we built a very consistent board comprised of alumni and supports the association on its path. I'm currently the CEO of the association. We have the executive board comprised of alumni with different roles. We have the fiscal council, one of the responsible, the accountability is there, the transparency is there. So that's why we have the fiscal council to monitor us. We have different projects that are carried out by the association. So it was born from three pillars. The pillar of giving back to assist youth in vulnerable situations to enter these Sinai courses. The other pillar of giving back is supporting healthcare institutions by providing technical knowledge and management knowledge to improve their processes. And the third pillar, the development of our community and our alumni. So that was, those were the three pillars to build the school and you can see them in, they're represented by those programs that the association is currently responsible for. About the programs, just a few words. We have a program where we give talks and workshops for our community. We invite alumni or people outside from our community to bring in technical, technological and management knowledge. These talks take place on a, a monthly basis. They used to be done at school. Here are some of the talks that we held during this period. Currently, these talks are taking place online. So they continue monthly. It's a huge opportunity for us to bring our community together. The other program is the Youth Apprentice Program, where we help youth from vulnerable situations in low-income regions to enter the school. Not just the Swiss Brazilian School, but it also includes a second school, the Aritori School. And our dream, as I mentioned, is to increase the scope of that and be able to support youth to enter other Sinai schools around Sao Paulo and Brazil. Here we have a testimonial. Hi, I'm Vinicius Magalhães, and I had the opportunity of being part of the first class of the ASME Youth Apprentice. So with that program, I entered the mechanics program and already employed by a company. I had periodical monitoring during the school and during the internship with my mentor, Philippe. Throughout the course, I was able to take part in many talks provided by the association. I also won two paid trainings because of that. The second one was for supervisory systems, and that's where my mechatronics interest flourished. And when I end when I ended the course and was hired by the company, I took the mechatronics course by Sinai. And after that, I had the opportunity to work at a multinational company, Siemens, which is the company that I currently work for. And now to continue with my training, I was approved in the Sinai Technology School, and this time in industrial automation. And my track... My background is mainly resulting from the association and from Felipe, and if all of that helped me in my professional work and my personal life. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, 
I feel touched by that. We've been assisting this boy for many years. He comes from a very low income region, the extreme south of the region of the city of Sao Paulo, a very vulnerable region. He entered Sinai, he took the first course and then the second course, and now he's in upper education, he's working at Siemens. So we feel very emotional about that. There are three pillars in the Youth Apprentice course. One of them is to prepare them uh, from the community to enter the school. And the second pillar is getting companies that would hire them so that they could have the financial means to help their family while they study at Sinai. In parallel to that, we have the mentorship program where there are many of us, but here there's just a picture of myself and Philippe. Each one of us mentors some of the youth, one, two, or three of them, and support them throughout that period. So first we go to the community where they live, when they're still not in Sinai, and we support them and we help them to enter the school, to join the school together with support from other third sector companies that already operate in those regions. So then they come to the school, we adapt them to be able to study here. This is one, a class that joined during social distancing, you can see that. But we didn't stop our work. We always have groups that are joining. So we mentor them. Former or former students or alumni support the youth. And during the program, we take them to visit companies, to visit trade shows of the industry. Whenever possible, we look for other training that's sponsored by companies from our former students in our community so we can add on to their technical training at Sinai. We've had the pleasure of having, this is the first class of the Youth Apprentice Program at the end of 2019. We also have a program where some of the students that the Noteworthy mentions receive scholarships to study in the upper education classes at Sinai. This is Jessica, for instance, who was part of the program and she received the scholarship. We also received the support of business people. This is Mirko. He is the CEO of a metallurgy close to our school. Mirko is also an alumni. He supports our program and he hires our youth. So it's a chain reaction. It's systemic where our alumni work in different companies that support the program, that give talks, that talk to youth, mentor them and hire them. So we're able to create a virtuous cycle in such a problematic universe that we see out there. Philippe, you're mute. Sorry. We have a program that's dedicated to the AACD, the association of, that assists disabled children. So a technological agreement was signed between the association and the AACD. Fully supported by Sinai Swiss Brazil. So the Sinai board has enabled us to do work that helps and assists in all the needs that this program has. So there are a number of needs in the program. Next, uh, can you show the video, please? Which is aiming at 
improving the production processes, tooling, and final products such as prosthetics, mechanical knees, for instance. So it's a way for them to have easy access to improvements, better costs, and better turnaround time. The group of engineers and technicians, people that graduated from Senai, has been doing work with our association and Senai to make tooling, to make helmets on 3D printing equipment. The helmets are for children that have disabilities and require assistance from when they're two to three months of age until they're one year of age. And that really helps a lot by having the equipment and printers that were donated by business people. And software and hardware programs, as well as other projects were created in the tooling and other devices to have an improvement of the production processes of the AACD. That's one of the basic programs that we have. This is a tooling that was provided with the assistance from Sinai alumni together with a team of technicians and people responsible at AACD for product development. So AACD together with Sinai and our association provided this tooling to make the prosthetics. This is a video of the equipment that was possible through one of the member companies that invested in CAD CAM software. So the product helps a lot in all the processes necessary for improvements in people with disabilities. This is to illustrate the workshops where products are prepared that became possible from donations of local business people and companies through AACD, our association, and Sinai. Here you can see the preparations where they requested assistance from us during the pandemic for the respirators. The, our association did a campaign in a partnership with business people and companies. So we prepared the masks and face shields so we can help people. Claudio? Well, as Philippe mentioned, during the pandemic, our association mobilized itself to produce the face shield. First, the stem that holds the face shield. We did a partnership with one of our colleagues of an alumni and part of the association, they have a, a company that does 3D printing and started to produce that. And then we realized we needed more scale. So we did a campaign and collected funds for the injection molding that was donated to AACD so that they can produce their own face shields. We did this campaign and it was expanded. We donated to many institutions, over 70 institutions that were benefited by the AESB 
uh, initiative, our association. So that's a list of the donations. And as I mentioned, there's a third dimension, which is the community of alumni. So we have a program that encourages networking among alumni to provide business opportunities and business and job opportunities for our alumni. And the benefits for our members are many benefits in healthcare plans, for instance. Philippe? It's important to mention that the success we have with the alumni is because of the partnership that we have with Sinai and the board of Sinai, enabling us to grow and based on the needs connected to the community, Sinai has been helping us in our work. It's important to say that it's work, it's a two way street. So we offer improvements for the courses and the school, prepare instructors and professors, and Sinai supports us in helping the community's needs such as the association, such as the Young Apprentice Program, where we have the, the youth that need schools. So we've been doing that. And the support is very important for us to train that entire group. This is the association's board in participating in events that are important to advance our work with Sinai. So that's Glauber. He's one of the board members of AESB, the association, who is working together to bring in improvements to the community so that we can work together with society. So the Federation of the Industries of Sao Paulo did this mobilization to understand the need for having this very important school for society. Here we show all the licenses that were granted by Glauber. Can you go back actually to the video? Glauber is the one in that picture. He's the director of the company called Top Solid. And in the work that he's done, he's been donating a lot of licenses of the Top Solid product software for projects. So he's been offering a lot of assistance in improving the schools. That's work that's been carried out together with Sinai, AESB, his donations and donations from other business people as well. Here we have the donation of machines that measure measurement machines from Zeiss. Alberto is also one of our members and director of the Young Apprentice Program. His company offered equipment for measuring equipment for the 3D area and equipment to measurement equipment for the lab. The equipment helps us to maintain and allow the school to always advance 
in pursuing quality improvement for products. This is the same case. Donations that were made by companies. This is an x-ray machine. So that we can expect materials with cracks or other defects that you might find in product inspection. Well, I think that's what we have to say. We took a little bit longer than what we imagined. We're building this reality after the time that we spent at school, after those amazing four years that we had, after the seeds that we planted way back. We had a life. Everybody follows their own path, but there was that seed that Sinai planted by our great instructors and school. Five or six years ago, we started to build the association AESB, the Alumni Association, which was Philippe's idea. And now we're back. We're much more in Sinai than anywhere else. We're actively taking part in this interaction and promoting that Sinai relationship with our alumni community and supporting com the surrounding communities. I believe that that's the absolute proof that shows the effectiveness of the excellence that is attained in professional education process. Professional educational education process doesn't end when you leave the school, when you graduate. It's something that you take with you for your whole life. And you're educators. You know that more than I do. Education is a transforming force. Philippe and I are a great example of youth that were transformed by education. The education that we received way back by the Senai Swiss Brazilian School, Paul Ernesto Tolli, and that shows the efficacy and the excellence of professional education projects. I would like to highlight that this model, and I'd like to make it very clear that the school must enable people that come from lower income situations or less favorable situations, that they are welcomed by the instructors, by the teachers, the professors, as we were welcomed in the school. That really favors the learning when they're welcomed with respect and the feeling of belonging will allow us to understand what life can give us. So we are the result of that possibility. That's what I wanted to clarify. That was the most important aspect for me. That type of humanistic and technological education, one supplements the other and really allows us to have access to things that in many places we otherwise wouldn't have. So to conclude, the association publishes its reports showing the result of our work throughout the year and among our values is transparency. So we have these reports available. You can visit our website and see the the reports, we can also send them by email. Every year we show what the association does. We are providing accountability for what we do in a very transparent and responsible manner with that spirit of always giving back. It's a long report. You can, next slide. Well, once again, we go back to the basic slide. All of that truly shows the excellence of the project of professional training that doesn't end inside the school. We plant the, the seed at the school. 
we water it and let it grow throughout our entire life. And now we have the opportunity of giving that back. As Philippe mentioned, it's not just technical and soft skills, but it's also our spirit and the purpose that the association has of giving back that attests to the excellence of the project and the success of our project. This is our contact information. We would like to thank you for your patience. There's my contact information and Philippe's. I just have one additional comment in addition to transforming education and the excellence in the educational process. There's an African saying that says, if one day you don't know where to go, look back where you came from and you'll never be lost. So I know where I came from. I came from Sinai. Thank you. Well, we have three questions, one from Roberto diaz Pais. He's asking, how can you make youth be passionate about technical training and embrace the possibility of changing their life? Could you make a quick comment? Because I have two more questions. I'd like to dare to answer. I think that is becoming a bigger and bigger challenge, right? Because there are many possibilities for new generations. And I agree that that is a challenge. I believe that one of the things that are essential that we have to consider is our mentorship program. When the youth sees see examples of success and students that took or alumni that took part of, uh, that took these courses that are now business people that transformed their lives. When we show those examples, that is a way of closing that gap. But I do agree. It's very difficult. It's a great question. Thank you for your question. But that's something we fight for every single day. But I do believe that the mentor mentorship does help us. Philippe, would you like to comment? I can add. It's very important for them to be welcomed in the school. When the instructors participate and are truly interested in onboarding youth so that they know that they will be successful in the future helps a lot. They won't want to run away because that's what they're doing already. They're escaping from the outskirts, escaping from the streets. So they're being welcomed, they're being received. And maybe before that, they didn't have the possibility and even seeing a school that is dedicated to them that will enable them to see that they will have a better future. We have one more question from Edgar Garzon. Who appoints the Sinai director, business people or the government? I'll answer this one because I work in the institution. Actually, Sinai. Sinai identifies among its professionals in this process of evolution. So they're in instructor and then they became become a group leader or a practice leader and then a coordinator and then they become a director. It's a process of evolution of growth and maturity of that professional. We also have a very interesting question here from our colleague of the board. You see Escola, she's from El Salvador. Would you give talks and assistance or actually based on your experience, would you give assistance to establish alumni associations in other institutions? I would dare to say that it would be a pleasure in these just a couple of years of our association, I've had the pleasure of having young men such as Vinicius 
who is already a market professional, he works in a multinational company, makes me feel very confident in be, being able to talk about what is actually possible. So I'm completely open to do that type of work wherever and whenever <laughs> we're at your disposal, myself and the association. And I'm sure that Claudio, Claudio, what would you like to say? Felipe was saying that it was a dream that we would, that we never imagined that we would be here speaking to 270 people from dozens of countries on our continent about our experience. We could have never dreamed of this. So, and then to conclude, you ask us if we would replicate that, please tell me when, where, I'll do that immediately. It would be a pleasure. That's what we want. That's what we do. So tell me where it is online, in, por in person, wherever it may be. Myself, Philippe, the association has many members and many people that are working directly in the association. We're over 30 for, uh, former member or former students with different experiences. Just let us know. We'll run right over. Thank you, Ms. Ilse will contact us. I know she's passionate about professional education. We have a comment from Marco Genesi, who is one of the pioneers in the meetings, alumni meetings. He's, he was the first president of the association. He's connected and he's thanking all participants for the praise received to this presentation and the association. We also have Luis Antonio Arias, who says that did some strong work in this and wants to resume it to bring in the all these soft skills as well. We have one from Roberto Diaz Pais. How do you invite the business world and the government so you can strengthen youth training. I'd like to comment. Today, the Minister of Science and Technology in Brazil is Senai alumni. He's one of the biggest ambassadors of that importance. However, that's not enough. We need to do a lot of work. You may not know, but here in Brazil, for instance, the number of youth that are in that take vocational training is not even 10%. In Switzerland, it's about 80%. So in these big companies, uh, countries, that is one of the main factors of success at all levels. But those that go through vocational training and professional training, even if they work in other areas with other degrees, they work in different areas and more objectively. That, But that's my point of view. Claudio and Philippe? How can you invite the corporate world and the government to strengthen youth training and education? That's a daily challenge. With our experience and our networking, we want to bring these business people closer to us. Without a doubt, the teaching institutions have to have adequate training for what business people are looking for. And I know that's a challenge for all educators in the vocational area. And the way to bring these business people in is adding on to the real world. And that's what we've been doing, been bringing in these examples at the association, using our networking and influence to try to bring them closer. And sometimes the business needs that the business people have isn't being considered. So if we build that bridge, I think it would make a huge difference. I 
I would like to thank Claudio and Philippe, where they have clearly demonstrated that professional education is the most effective uh, means for social and economic transformation. Thank you, Claudio and Philippe, for sharing your experience. Stay firm in your purpose because my experience says that that's what humanity needs. So I wish you all the health. I've I met them when they were 14, 15 years of age. That was back in 76. Do the math. And I know their path. Philippe is very strong and in the beginning of the association he he said that i have no more friends from my childhood either they died or they're in jail right and he did work and now there's over he has four oh, over 400 employees and companies and he's bringing giving back to the community Claudio, as you can see, has many different job positions, and now he's one of the instructors and one of the most one of the most renowned universities in the country. FGV. I'm getting another question here from Cydia Serena Lex. One is one of the problems is dropping out of vocational schools and how can we involve more women? Well, if Claudio and Philippe, yes, without your mentorship, some of the youth would drop out. I think Asidia Serrano, Alexei, would like to know your opinion. So one problem is participant dropping out. How can you keep them in and how do you engage more women in vocational careers? It's always hard to answer that question. I believe, again, that if we get closer to companies, if from the start we can integrate youth to these companies in the programs that we have where the companies can hire them from the start of the course. I believe that that's an opportunity. Without a doubt, throughout the course, some of them may find out that that's not their calling. I'm studying mechanics, but I decided that I want to be a musician. That Obviously, that can happen. But when we talk about that, we have formal, f former colleagues that are renowned musical producers, Michelle Frights. And so, I believe that the school should give them a sense of belonging. As Felipe mentioned, in needy communities, we don't have that. So when you provide that sense of belonging, it's more difficult for them to leave because I belong to this. I don't want to leave because I have nothing else. I believe that that makes a difference. And being closer to companies is also a huge difference. And the mentorship program, that's not easy to replicate can make a huge difference. That will show them the examples. And I learned that without Professor Spada having saying that way back, but I learned with Professor Spada that the best way of leadership is the example, is the role model, model. And Professor Spada and others were that for us. So when we see that, we want to follow them. So we have a huge challenge for all of you as educators, but I believe that that may be the path. To add, I would like to say that many business people don't have the awareness of what they can do and help, for help and how they can help youth so that they don't get lost in their path. So I believe that the business people aren't ready yet. We need to educate them because if they donate themselves more to society by offering opportunities in which they can get closer to schools through these programs, 
and understand the correct way to use the benefit that the school will give them, they will allow youth to stay until the end. The truth is the, con the human contribution has to be bigger on all sides. So if they feel embraced, they won't give up. So we have to prepare our institution, our schools, our values. They have to be well prepared so that we can convey that in a very convincing manner so that we can give them the permission, so to speak, to not be a dropout. So we have to prepare the awareness and human development of business people as well. Thank you. Once again, thank you, Claudio. Thank you, Philippe. I'd like to thank all the World Skills America's board members. I would like to thank Carmen and Rebecca who translated for us, Paul Marino, Anderson, and the entire team that helped us out here. So on April 23rd, we'll have our next webinar. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to all our participants. I apologize for running over time. But you could see that in addition to the educational aspect, there's something called full commitment, compassion, and about being real human beings. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Stay safe. We need strong educators so that we can continue building the professional education as an instrument of social and economic transformation. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.